Okay, the Premier League in England has agreed to use VAR from the 2019-2020 season. Uh, this is a complete U-turn on on their position up to this date. Uh, in the summer, after the A-League Grand Final, the Premier League clubs, which had already agreed to implement VAR, decided to withhold that introduction and wait a further year. Because the, in the A-League Grand Final, as done on this channel, the, 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 the VAR did fail. It didn't work. It failed after five, six minutes, and there was no backup, and uh, most of the game had to be played with no video assistant referee, uh, which was kind of embarrassing for the A-League uh, CEO, and, and, and the final was a little bit overshadowed by it. So on one one failure, Premier League decides to vote against implementing, even though they'd already agreed in principle to implement. Then the World Cup comes along, and they should have actually waited until after the World Cup had been completed, because VAR played a very crucial role throughout that entire tournament and was tested in every single game. It may not have to be used in every single game, but the system was, test, was, was tested throughout the tournament. Very good sample size, uh, and it gave us, the fans, an idea of uh, worldwide what VAR is all about. Yes, there are flaws in the system. Absolutely, it needs some tweaking and, and it needs some ironing out of a few issues. But the basic principle of AR is good. There were some instances which were like, well, it's interpretation by the officials then, because we know that the, the replays work, we know that it picks up things. It's down to interpretation of the officials. But the basic system works. Premier League clubs still do not want to implement. Fast forward to last weekend, and we've seen several controversial incidents actually throughout that entire period from the end of the World Cup to now. Charlie Austin, Southampton player, uh, giving a post-match interview is less than pleased with the lack of VAR at the game that he's just played in against Watford, where both sides were clearly denied goals, penalties, free kicks, um, etc., etc. There were key decisions that if VAR was there, would have been made. His uh, now post-match interview has gone viral. But it, he's had a, he's reached a point, and I think uh, many of the players and managers have reached a point where they're looking at their club chairman going, why did you vote against this system again? Because this is what happens. Um, it's infuriating, and especially Southampton, a club that is sort of in a relegation battle, kind of need as many decisions to work for them as possible. Um, yeah, so they're clearly, the clubs themselves and their employees, the players and managers, are on a different viewpoint here of where VAR should be. What has now happened is the Premier League clubs have agreed VAR will be in for next season. They, they've just straight up agreed going, yeah, it'll be there from next year. We're sorry. Basically, they've dragged their feet over this, which is really surprising considering the amount of money that's at stake if a team gets relegated or promoted on, on the basis of not having VAR at a game. The financial implications, if you do not put VAR in place, are massive for clubs. Titles can be won and lost. Relegations can be avoided or, or you can get relegated because of a poor decision. They can, individual games are the key that can decide your season. Um, we'll have to see, obviously, uh, what improvements is made to the system uh, over the summer. Uh, it's still being tested in other leagues, such as Italy and Germany. So it's not as if it's not being tested elsewhere in Europe. Uh, I think the Portuguese league as well, I believe, is, is, is testing the use of VAR. But what surprises me uh, as a sports fan is why football, the wealthiest sport in the world, has taken this long to try and bring in more technology to help the officials. We started with goal line tech four years ago at the World Cup, and now we're getting onto VAR after this World Cup. So until four years ago, we didn't have any tech in the game at the highest level. We didn't. Rugby Union, Rugby League, the NHL, the NFL... Every major sports league and sport around the world, apart from football, has been using tech for two decades, if not more. Two, three decades. Why is it taking football so long to catch up with some sports which have far less money in them, like rugby league? Why are sports like rugby league so far ahead in using and utilising the technology that is available to assist the officials when football is lagging so far behind? Is it because the financial costs and stakes are, are lower in a, in, a, in a less wealthy sport? When if a team wins or loses, the prize money isn't as much as football. I don't know. But it is decided that from 2019, they're going to implement using it. Now, obviously, yes, the system does need some improvements, but I think it does have a strong core base. It will, obviously, as more usage is done with it, improve. Uh, the criticism I have, it takes too long to make a decision. We as fans at home or in the stadium aren't sure what's going on. Um, and some of the decisions are a bit baffling and what the remit's going to be but apart from that it does have a good basic principle and we'll see 
what happens next season and how many decisions it gets right and how many decisions it gets wrong. So I don't know, we'll have VAR watch or something. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens going forward. But I am surprised football's taking this long. But there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Place your comments below and I'll have some more videos for you soon.